My expert, John Gould, tells me he's found different species of finches. What if these finches were blown to the Galapagos from South America and then began to change, adapt, if you will, become more and more different from their ancestors generation after generation? First into varieties, then into new species. Each new species marooned on its own island. What are you talking about? What if the finches were blown to the Galapagos? God put those creatures there. <laughs> that makes no sense. Why would God put different birds on almost identical islands? I have no idea. It's not a question that requires an answer. Species were commanded into existence by God. They're perfect forms, and they've been perfect since the day of creation. It's divine law, God's will. In Darwin's day, the idea of evolution, what school regarded as highly unorthodox, because it went against all of natural history in Great Britain. It jeopardized the standing of science. It did jeopardize the standing of a stable society, the Bible, and the church as well. We allow the planets and the sun to be governed by natural laws. But the smallest insect, we wish to be created by a special act of God. <laughs> Surely the creation of life has to be explained in the same way as geology, using natural, ordinary, everyday causes. Well, in theory, yes, but in practice, there can be no question about the prime cause. Which is what, Professor Owen? Divine will. Shouldn't men of science be free to investigate each and every means by which new species come into being? If by that you mean wild accusations about man's ancestry, the answer is no. To destroy man's unique status is to open the floodgates to anarchy. You might just as well throw muskets to the rabbit. Darwin's idea of natural selection is a great idea. But it's a dangerous idea because it requires us to invert our usual scheme, our traditional scheme of purpose and meaning, and replace a top-down theory with a bottom-up theory. And people resist that. And they ask for exemption. And that creates collisions and conflicts because people don't want to change their habits of thought about the source of purpose in the universe. You say here that the human eye may possibly have been acquired by gradual selection of slight, but in each case useful, deviations. Yes. That's a very great assumption, Charles. Well, if I'm wrong about that, I'm wrong about everything. My entire theory's in ruins. Can your theory account for the way my eyes and ears and hands and heart combine to reproduce the sounds that Chopin heard in his head? Isn't that a God-given gift? Well, it's given, but not, I think, by God. You're a man of science. You don't want to believe anything until it's proved. But some things are beyond proof. It would be a nightmare to me if I thought we didn't belong to each other forever in heaven. <laughs> 